Now it's our turn to, uh, sorry for the words, but put our balls on the table. Remember, kids, this is not how you play hockey. It's just ugly. I like it. Where you guys? I'm doing this. You know what? I love ice cream, too. <laughs> Go back to Canada, Guy Lafleur. Game on! Yeah, game on! Hello and welcome back to the Hockey Show here on Mile High Sports with J.J. Derez, that's me, and Ryan Bowling over here to my right, and of course, the man, the myth, Danny Bailey here to take care of us. I'm so happy you're still here with us, Danny. Thanks for coming back and being a part of Season 2, Episode 1 of the Hockey Show. Happy to be here. I'm looking forward to uh, another great hockey season. Absolutely. It doesn't feel like it's been that long, right? I think our last episode was the day of the Seattle Kraken draft. Um, of course, we're a couple weeks late on the start of the season, but timing has never we're, been we're our strength. We're right where we need to be. We just come in, you know, like a like a bear shook from its hibernation, ready to ready to go. Right. And, you know, if you remember last season of our show, we started the week after the Stanley Cup playoffs ended. Um, so, yeah, it, we, we've never been good at timing. The first season of the or the first week of the season, I had a little golf tournament, charity golf tournament to attend last weekend. You were out of town. So here we are. We're back. Hockey show in full force. And there's 13 freaking hockey games on today. So exciting. So thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk everything we can for you and as usual, we got to start our show like we always do, Ryan, with matinee money, right? Where uh, ha- I guess let's start. How was your uh, last couple months of betting? So in the you know in the off season, I forget to bet on things when it's not hockey season. I'm like a football game will start and I'll be like, oh, I should have bet on this. So I kind of like you know you know how we do. I kind of float in my uh, odds boost requests and and things like that. But haven't done a whole lot of betting uh, until hockey started. Yeah, hockey, uh, I mean, you know, I try, especially during the off season, you've got to fill that itch, right? And I try to bet on the NFL, I try to bet on soccer, I try to bet on even college football, which I know nothing about, and it always bites me in the behind. So that hockey's back now, I'm feeling good, I'm making money again on my account, and let's just say this, I'm going to have to probably pay taxes this year on my betting winnings. Oh, this guy, humble brag Look at me here. go. Look at me go. So that being said, let's just get in. Just tell me what you're betting from now and just text me your bets and I'll just do them too. Well, my secret now is is I just stick to parlays, right? Because yeah. even if you lose three out of four, when you hit that four, you make up for all your losses. So parlays are, are kind of the, what I've been sticking to. Today I've got a parlay, but you know, in typical matinee money fashion, it's not going so well. For some reason, these matinees just always go the opposite of how I think they're going to go. So maybe I need to remember that for the future because I do have a Washington Capitals, New York Rangers parlay right now, which hit me at plus nine, 194, which I loved, but both of which are losing so far. That's not good for me, no. I don't think either. You know, I love the odds boost. I took a plus 700 in DraftKings on uh, McKinnon and Stamkos to both score in the game later today. So... Fingers crossed there. However, I followed your lead on the parlay, but I went big, and I went 13-game parlay. Every game. Every you game. You know, I always have that, you know, why not go for the Grand Slam, you know, just throw five bucks on it, because it can happen. You see it all the time on the Internet. People hit these amazing 12-team parlays. So, yeah, go on. Yeah, well, I bet $4.01, and I could win nine grand. <laughs> so I'm I'm nervous now because you said the Capitals, but here's here's where I did it. All right. Yeah, hit your rundown. I picked the Capitals over Calgary. This is all money line right here. So I far, picked, so bad. I picked the the Rangers over the Senators. <laughs> I picked the Wild over the Ducks. I picked the Predators over the Jets. Jets got running rampant with COVID right now. I've got uh, Toronto over Pittsburgh. I've got Tampa over the Avalanche. Florida over the Flyers. Detroit over the Canadians. Carolina over CBJ, St. Louis over LA. LA's in a back-to-back. They just lost in overtime last night. I've got the Islanders over the lowly Coyotes, the Canucks over the Kraken in their home opener because Seattle, woof, and Buffalo over the Devils. Who'd you have in the uh, Avalanche Lightning there? Lightning. Yeah. Not a good start for the Colorado Avalanche. We'll get more into their 1-3-0 and oh start with Mike Chambers here in the next segment, so let's stick around for that. That'll be fun. We love talking to Mike. But, yeah, I guess let's just get into the NHL season as a whole. I like your picks. I try to stick to more like three, four-game parlays because once you get crazy, that's when you know you're going to lose. Well, you know somebody's going to have an upset. Like, I picked, I picked, you know, some, some teams projected to lose. I think uh, 
you know, Washington was tough for me, mm -hmm. or New York was tough for me. I kind of wanted to pick the Senators. I felt like I should have. I kind of wanted to pick the Ducks, but I didn't. They just, you know, injuries are, are knocking some teams down. Pittsburgh's without Crosby or Jari. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of an interesting start to the season so far when you look around the NHL. We'll dive into that here before this segment ends. But first, I kind of wanted to just back up. Let's start over from the start of the season and maybe even the off season, and kind of ask you, you know, what were some of the big storylines that you were looking for coming into opening night of the NHL? I was looking at teams that seem to have improved, you know, a lot of guys in new homes. You, you start the NHL week going, oh, yeah, I can't. I forgot that this guy is yeah, here. Absolutely. Last night I was like, wow, Ryan Suter's playing with Miro Heiskanen in Dallas mm -hmm. in overtime. Like, what is happening? What is happening in the world? But for me, you know, new players on new teams, I was excited to see how Chicago has done. Hint, not well. Uh, I was excited to see what Montreal was going to do. Hint, not much. <laughs> and I, I was really excited to see how Seattle was going to come out of the gate. And, you know, I thought they started their very first game really fired up and looking really good. And I haven't really liked what I've seen since. Yeah, I mean, you've got three teams there, right, that, that still haven't won a game yet. And that's Montreal. That's Arizona, and that's the Chicago Blackhawks. I mean, you look at Montreal and Chicago, both teams expected to do bigger things this year, right? I, I definitely had uh, the Chicago Blackhawks being a good team. They made a lot of offseason moves. They look like Fleury they're going for net, it. Exactly. Right? Which is a big boost. You get Seth Jones, take it or leave it, right? I think, the, you know, you have a tough season opener against the Avalanche. Like, that's just a, you know, a tough one to start the season. But uh, even I tweeted this out during the game, like we all knew how that game was going to go, but I expected much more out of Chicago than we saw. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're showing a lot of promise in small spurts, but they just keep end up losing the game. Here's one thing I wanted to touch on so far on the start of the season, Ryan. The bottom seven teams in the NHL right now. I'm going to read them off to you. Montreal, last year's playoff team. Last New year's cup runner-up. New York Islanders. Last year's semifinal ist, right? Also a playoff team. The Tampa Bay Lightning, Chicago Blackhawks, Arizona Coyotes, Vegas Golden Knights, and the Colorado Avalanche. You have five playoff teams in that list of seven right now. So it's just a weird start to the season. A lot of good teams getting out of the gate uh, poorly, and a lot of poor teams coming out of the gate pretty strong. Which is crazy, too, because I've watched a couple of Golden Knights games. I felt like they've played pretty well, you know, but... Obviously, things aren't aren't really going well for any of these teams to start. And it's, you know, I was watching uh, TNT, whatever game was on TNT. Maybe it was the... On Wednesday? I don't think it was the Avs game, but Anson Carter was talking about Montreal, and he said, you're 0-4, you know, some of the... the you, you're missing Shea Weber, you're missing uh, Carey Price, you know, Kakiemi leaves. It's like, you're at a point, he's like, they're done. Their season is over. 0 and 4. Their season is over. And Wayne Gretzky was laughing like you can't you can't say it on that, but I'm like if they're done, what does that say about these bottom 7 teams? What does that say about the Avalanche? Like the Avalanche are 1 and 3. Now they have a lot more talent, I'd argue, than Montreal does, but what does that say about how their their season is starting? Right, and not just them, right? All the other teams we've named. I mean, those are big-name teams, especially guys like the New York Islanders. Those are people that were expected to go to the Stanley Cup maybe this year. Yeah, I mean, they've been inching their way closer. They're a favorite of mine this Right, year. right. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things that I was most excited about for the new season is just the teams getting back to a regular schedule, right? We all hated watching Colorado versus Arizona eight times last year, and you're seeing that take effect already. San Jose, who started the season undefeated so far, they had one home game, and then they got to jump right into Canada, right? Somewhere they hadn't been in a couple seasons, and they go and beat Montreal, Ottawa, and Toronto. San Jose making some noise. That's kind of what we were saying. Good teams coming out weak. Teams we weren't expecting to be any good coming out super strong. So there's still obviously a ton of time for that to correct itself, and no time to panic for the Avalanche just yet. But getting out of the gate, I mean, we hear it every season how important that is for any team, and a couple teams dropping the ball right now. Well, let's talk about injuries, too. This has been a weird season for injuries already. Like, you're having guys go down week to week. For Vegas, you know, Pacioretty's out week to week. Mark Stone is between day-to-day -day and week-to-week, -week, and you, they don't really know. All we know is it's not surgery there, right? Like, what else What else are we missing here? We've got Francouz goes out. 
with an injury. You've got Devon Tave starting the season injured. You know, you're you're missing key components. Nathan McKinnon starts the season with COVID. Jared Bednar starts the season with COVID. Like you've got a lot of these these stronger teams dealing with, I would say, some pretty significant injuries. The Islanders start the season with Varlamov on IR because he's dealing with some soreness around an injury. Like he hasn't he hasn't really started the season on time. It's it's a weird world. You look at like my fantasy lineup is just like what is the damage today? Yeah, well that's the thing too. When I was doing our fantasy draft, Ryan, I was w- running around the Central Division. I'm just looking like wow, there's so many good players in the Central Division this year that you know it's going to be a tougher division. So we're seeing it already. A- and with the injuries, with the Avalanche, you know, I, I don't want to be the guy that's saying, man, this stinks five games, four games into the season. But this is something you've seen in Colorado for the last two years, right? I mean, you look back to the bubble playoffs and the team had too many guys missing and they really pointed the finger at that. But but this has been the issue for seasons now. So to happen so early already in this young season that the Avalanche are already dealing with guys in and out of the lineup, and we'll get more into that with Mike Chambers, just, just frustrating stuff as an Avs fan. Yeah, I can't imagine people are thrilled. I can't imagine the team is super thrilled with the way things are going. My key concerns, which you said we can get into with Mike Chambers, but like Francois, the guy has, what, double hip surgery? Hip surgery, comes back, says he's feeling good, he's ready, hurt immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, that's concerning. A lot of lower body injuries, it seems, for some guys around the league. Like, what kind of strange conditioning are they not in? that these injuries are occurring this quickly. And this is the first 82-game season we've seen in a couple years. The injuries are only going to continue, and it's only going to get worse from here on out. So Kucherov, too. Yeah. Before we uh, wrap up here for the segment, let's talk about the remaining undefeated teams. We talked about the Sharks already. The Oilers still undefeated. St. Louis, Minnesota, Florida, and Carolina, all teams undefeated. Uh, I think the real only surprise there, I guess, would be the Sharks, right? I mean, we expected the, the other teams sure. to be the other teams to be relatively very good. I would say the Oilers too. It's a team that struggles up and down all the time, but you cannot stop Connor McDavid. You yeah, just he cannot be stopped. He seems to be on a mission this year for sure. I mean, and St. Louis should worry Avs fans because if that's a team that's found their mojo, look out. So, with that being said, what are some other teams that you kind of wanted to watch heading into the uh, season this year? I'll, I'll start with mine while you kind of think about it. Chicago was one of them. I'm really disappointed by what Chicago's done. St. Louis, though, has really impressed me. I wasn't sure they were going to be this good, but they m- made their team better, right? Which is more than you can say for Colorado. So, I think St. Louis is definitely one of those teams I'm watching. And the LA Kings, I love what they've put together this year. They're having a hard time still putting together some wins. They've only won once. One, two, and one is their record, but I think they're going to put some things together and really be a dominant team. I mean, that game you mentioned, they were in overtime last night against the Dallas Stars. They dominated that game. Stars kind of stole it there late and and then again in an OT winner, but the the Kings won that game every in every aspect except the score. I turned it on the third period and Dallas had I think 11 shots. Yeah, exactly. In the third period of the hockey game and LA had like 38. And I Dallas had the next eight shots, a goal, put it into overtime, ended up winning. It was a wild back and forth overtime where no goalie was really given much. I actually liked the goaltending in that game. Oh, yeah. Quick versus Holpe. It looked really good. I like uh, Seattle as a team to watch just because they're new. I like Dallas because you always wonder what's going on there after they went deep into the, the Stanley Cup final. Mm-hmm. I like uh, the Rangers are a team I'm watching. Uh, St. Louis is another team that I'm watching. Well, Seattle already ahead of the Colorado Avalanche in the standings only because they have one extra overtime loss. Other than that, they're pretty comparable. But we'll get more into the Avalanche here in the following segment with Mike Chambers. So stick around. We'll be right back. We're so happy to be back here on the Hockey Show on Mile High Sports. Love you guys. See you soon. Right now it's 16 minutes past the big hour. Is that not right, Mr. Scream? Hey! And we're back. Season 2, Episode 1 of the Hockey Show right here on My High Sports, 98.1 FM. Colorado's biggest and best live hockey radio show. We're going to the phones to talk to a good friend of both of ours, Mike Chambers of the Denver Post. Mike, how you doing? You're back on the road for the first time in a long time. How's it feeling to be providing actual coverage out there and and being there in person? JJ, Ryan, it, it, it feels awesome. It's so good to be back on the road in the regular season. I, I missed it immensely, and um, it, it's just we're back to covering 
uh, be for real. And, and, and you got to be on the road to be in the game. And, and, and um, it, it just feels awesome. It's There's still some restrictions. It's not like uh, we're in the locker room back just yet, but uh, we're getting there. We're getting a lot of one-on-one interviews, um, and we're getting good access, relatively speaking. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, and thanks for having me on, boys. Absolutely. We love to have you on. You know that. And, Mike, for, I know for all of us, I've been right there by your side trying to cover this team for the last two years, and, and they were just so exhausting. Would you say you've kind of maybe found some rejuvenation now that this season's yeah. tiptoeing its way back to normal? Absolutely. Uh, I really question whether I wanted to remain in this business if things remained in COVID or, or like last year. It, it was just uh, it, it was exhausting just to try to cover a team from Zoom. It, it's just it was uh, really really hard. And again, like I said earlier, it's it, it's just it's so exciting to be back and and, and covering it how it, it it's got to be covered and that's what you got to be there and, and it, yeah it's just uh it, it's it's awesome and, and i i can't wait until the rooms are all the way open again hopefully that's soon when it doesn't hurt to be down in florida in october with some nice warm weather you know the yeah. beach out there st pete's yeah. maybe in tampa but mike what is going on with this hockey team here this is a, a cup contender favorite with one win yeah, well, they played good in the opener um, against Chicago. Uh, had a great start. Um, got up to a 3 nothing lead, and then they kind of um, didn't struggle. But Chicago got back into it based off of errors by the Avalanche. And, and you know, the Avs still held on and won. And then, obviously, the next game, you don't have a McKinnon, and you lose Landeskog. And... and Lucian was hurt, and Taves is still out. So you got a lot of a lot of firepower out, and, and then I think that just carried over into Washington. I, I couldn't believe how bad the, the abs were in Washington. It, it was it was painful. I was sitting on the front row in the press box, and Landeskog was directly in back of me, and, and I heard some of his comments like vaguely, and, and he couldn't believe it either. And it, it, it was just a really bad performance, and I just think that this is a really talented team that maybe has to go back to just working hard and not reading their press clippings and and, and just get back to basics. And I think that starts with Kale McCarr, who is last in the league in, in plus minus at minus nine. Um, I think he's it's been skating well for the most part. I mean, he's, he's, he's still an exceptional skater, but um, he's obviously having a lot of problems defending on that first goal um, against Washington, and and, and he's just struggling. McKinnon hasn't looked good in the two games that he's been back. Um, I just just think that this team is is not clicking on the cylinders that they have, so to speak, right now. Yeah, I think it's easy to to point the finger at the fact that they haven't had a full lineup for any game, right? They still got a handful of guys that have, have yet to make their appearance on in this season, but you'd also expect some of those depth guys that were expecting to take a bigger role this year to kind of step in and do that kind of stuff, but we're not seeing it. So, I guess my question to you is really are are we watching a team who's going through some growing pains of the changes that happened through the off season or did they simply just get worse as a team and they're you know, just trying to figure their way out through maybe the weaker lineup versus what they had last year. Well, I'll disagree with you for one player there. JT Confer has been fabulous. Um, he, he's, he scored a great short and a goal in Washington, and he's been overall pretty darn good. And, and tonight he's going to be on the second line, so he's getting promoted. Um, I, I think Tyson Jost has looked good in a depth role. He just hasn't produced, like, he hasn't throughout his career much, but um, I think those are two guys that have elevated their game or will elevate their game and replace guys like Don Skoy and Saad. I mean, there's four, four, I'm sorry, 41 goals from Don Skoy, Saad, and Bellamar that the Abs have to replace, and, and obviously those two guys, Confer and Jost, are, are, are big names there. But, uh, yeah, J.J., I think the depth um, – or the losses from last year could be showing here early. I think that this team is capable of filling those losses, but certainly that hasn't happened outside JT Conference just yet. 
Mike, do you think that there's maybe a little lack of confidence that the way the, the season ended last year kind of carrying over here? Or is it time to start, you know, looking at the coaching staff and wondering if, if what they're doing maybe isn't resonating like the way it used to? Yeah. Ryan, that's a good point. I, I, I do think this team is going to dig out of it. I think that I don't think Bednar is, and, and his staff has lost this team at all. I just think that they're just trying to find their way. Um, I thought that, you know, in terms of coaching, what happened in Washington was a shock to everybody. But then they turned it around and played pretty darn good against a good Florida team. I mean, if if they would have buried their chances, uh, I I thought Johansson and Nett was played good enough to win, and I thought the Abs played overall good enough to win. Um, so I don't think it's a coaching thing. I don't think that there's a real big lack of confidence. I think that the team looks at the game against Florida like I do, and, and the fact that they just beat themselves by not burying uh, a whole bunch of chances. Expect especially in the second period there. So I think the confidence is still there, but obviously tonight, man, if you lose and go down one to four, four, four losses in five games, obviously that's, that's, that's not good. And you got two tough, we're three tough teams next week in uh, Vegas uh, at uh, St. Louis and then at home again against, against the wild. So you know, it's a tough go. Uh, this team does not want to come home one and four, but uh, certainly that might happen because you're facing the two-time cup champions. And uh, this is a team in Tampa Bay that's super hungry at home because they're 0-2 here. It's Saturday night. They're going to be raring to go. Uh, I think it's going to be a great game. I can't wait. This is the Hockey Show with Ryan and JJ. We're talking to Mike Chambers of the Denver Post. Mike, I think one of the biggest talking points of this offseason was the goaltending switch and Darcy Kemper coming in. I'm not saying he's done anything to make me fall out of love or, or not buy into him, but he also hasn't done anything to sell me on him yet. I guess where, where, where are you standing right now on Darcy Kemper, and I guess are, are you expecting him to kind of turn it on and maybe turn things around and see that Darcy Kemper that we saw two years ago in the Arizona versus Colorado playoff matchup yeah well coming from a goalie yourself jj i think that that's interesting that you're asking me about goaltending but get him um, i i i mean as a sports writer as a hockey writer like i've i've never played goal like like i just i'm like most guys who have never played goal it's like you just the guy needs to stop the puck right mm -hmm. um and, and it's hard to comment unless you are a goalie but certainly from the outside it looks like Kemper's got a lot more to give. I mean, he hasn't been really solid. He was solid in the second period against Chicago and, 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 and kind of shut that door. But in, in his uh, next three games, he was average or below average. And, and that's how, you know, a guy like me who has never played the, the position – uh, I think that's fair that, that, that he hasn't really wowed anybody so far. How much of that Mike too is on the defense? You know, like we we're seeing Philip Grubauer really struggling with, uh, with Seattle so far. He had given up like 10 goals on 60 something shots. Last I looked, you know, he's not necessarily thriving the way he did with the avalanche. So it, it makes me wonder how much of that, you know, comes down to the rest of the team. Yeah. Well, it's a different team for sure. I mean, you lost seven guys who played in that last game against Vegas, uh, so there is some turnover. Uh, obviously, some of those guys like Eric Johnson are back now that, that uh, they didn't have in the playoffs. But uh, it, it should be a better blue line. I mean, I think it's deeper. I think that if you put uh, Ryan Murray and, and Jack Johnson as your third pairing, I think that that's better than Patrick Nemeth and uh, Connor Timmons, right? So uh, I I think that they're improved there in terms of their depth on the blue line, but uh, so far it really, well, I think the goaltending has kind of made a dent in that. But, uh, yeah, they, they have not been as good as they typically were last year. Um, but, but, again, I think overall as a team, I think that they're going to gel at some point, maybe tonight. 
Mike, one last from me before we let you go. I'm just curious your thoughts on the the slate of injuries, the the spate of injuries that are that are occurring around the league. You know, Vegas has lost Mark Stone and Pacioretty. Uh, Tampa's lost Kucherov. The Ducks just lost a player. You know, the Avs have lost Francouz for a while. You know, do you think it's a, like a conditioning issue maybe with the, you know, kind of a shorter off season back in? Is it concerning going into this full slate for the first time in a couple of years? No, I don't think that it's anything conditioning or being prepared. I think that these guys have never been so prepared to, to get a season. Um, I think that's just common now. Everybody comes in in great shape. You know, the uh, preseason testing, they know that that the tests are coming and you got to pass it with flying colors. So I don't think it's that. I just think it's bad luck a little bit for some teams. I think obviously the COVID issue is a huge deal and that's going to be a problem throughout. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of the injuries, the abs have had some too. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I never saw Val go out in Chicago. I mean, he, he played that whole game, but mm-hmm. somehow he got hurt. Or was that the second game he went out? I, I, I don't know. It was last week, but, but I don't know. Nobody saw him go out, so I don't know why he's out week to week. Apparently it's upper body, but uh, certainly staying healthy is a big key for any team, and, and I think Vegas right now is having some really bad luck. Well, Mike, last one here. This will be an easy one. Avalanche have an opportunity here to kind of steal a game because Tampa Bay came out of the gate just as slowly as Colorado. So as we talked about, you get to be there in person. It's much better. You saw morning skate today. What's your vibe of the team? What are you expecting for tonight's matchup? I think they're confident. I think that they uh, are building on confidence from the Florida game. I think if they get good goaltending from Kemper tonight, I think that they will uh, have a good chance to win the game. Right on, Mike. Well, as always, thanks for hanging out with us and uh, enjoy being down there. Thanks for having me, boys. I appreciate it. Take care. All right. Talk soon. Stay safe in that elevator ride up to the press box. (laughs) You love telling stories about that elevator. I've heard actually more media members circle back and and kind of mention similar things to how slow and long that elevator is. There are two in the league, and one is the Saddle Dome and one is that. Well, there you go. Mike Chambers of the Denver Post joining us here on the Hockey Show. Thanks to him, as always. We'll be right back, talk some more hockey, and get into – other things around the league. So we've, I think we've beat the Avalanche into the ground enough. Let's see what they do tonight. So we'll be right back right here on the Hockey Show, Mile High Sports, 98.1 FM, 107.5 HD3. Look at me go. And, of course, everywhere else on the Internet. Online, on YouTube. We'll be right back. Play hockey and fornicate. It's the two most fun things in cold weather. Welcome back. It's the Hockey Show right here on Mile High Sports. JJ Jerez, that's me, Ryan Bolding to my right. How you doing, Ryan? I'm good. I'm good. Trying to get out of that song before we get to the chorus because it's not appropriate. A bunch of curse words, right? Yeah, we're still on regular actually, radio. Actually, I think the curse word is appropriate because I know the list, and I'm pretty sure it is acceptable. But it's still. I obscene. think it might be the combination. Yeah, it's still obscene. Yeah. For our, our this delicate is a family listeners. show, right? This is yeah. Hockey fans would never. Well, it's still hockey terrestrial fans radio. Would never. <laughs> Hockey fans are some of the most grotesque people out there, right? I mean, we're seeing Seattle Kraken fans already get in a fight on their first road game of their history. I love seeing that. I didn't have... see that, but I can't say with all certainty and no respect whatsoever, I am sick of that NHL app release the Kraken commercial, and we're, what, six games into the season? Yeah, I mean, you know, in preparation for this show, you know, pull the curtain back, I prepare every show and make sure we have things to talk about, plenty of them too, you don't want to fall short, and in doing so, I log on to the ESPN Plus app, try to start looking at some articles, hockey related, first of all, all the ESPN Plus... I didn't know Plus, you could read, so that's oh, good I, to I'm know. I'm getting better at it yeah. every day, it's something I picked up during the pandemic. Um, you, you, you go through the ESPN Plus articles, and it's NFL, NBA, fantasy football. And no, not a single NHL article there. Then you have to kind of dig around, get to the NHL section. Then you click on the NHL section. All right, what kind of articles can we talk about? Literally the top four things. Seattle Kraken, Seattle Kraken, Seattle Kraken, Seattle Kraken. So they're buying heavily into this over there at ESPN. But that's exactly what we're going to get to talk about here in this segment is the change we've seen. From the coverage, from the television broadcast, and that's ESPN covering it, that's TNT covering it. Obviously, you've loved it so far. I haven't heard a single person complain, but I guess, you know, just what are your thoughts on the new coverage? 
Yeah, so far, I think the the most masterful part of this transition has been hiring talent from NBC to bring over because you hear Liam McHugh on TNT or you hear Kenny Albert or you hear Pucci Gras. For those of us who watch college hockey, you know, he, he's not an unfamiliar voice, mm -hmm. you know, so there's there's a little bit of similarity there's a little bit of comfort food in that where you're like oh this feels like it was but it's being presented to me differently you know i don't know if people miss pierre mcguire or not now that he works for ottawa right but i can say uh i've enjoyed both i can't remember now i tweeted about it i should have gone back and looked but one of them had the power play clock on like a timer projected on the ice you know digitally it's not actually projected on the ice but i love that seeing how much time is left on the power play in the power play, so you don't have to look up at the score. You can just see the players going and know the time. Uh, I'm not necessarily 100% sold on the, the shot speed thing. You know, I'm always like, how do they have it? I know there's chips in the puck and chips in the gear and all this stuff, but I'm like, how do they have it that quickly? Right, especially, you know, I think the other day I was watching Vegas and St. Louis, and what a game that was. That was on TNT, a goaltender battle. Robin Leonard surprised the heck out of yeah, me. I mean, not, real not, good. not that he was good. He was just finding ways to get hit by the puck, which is Robin Leonard's version of good. And Jordan Bennington looked stellar. Um, but yeah, there was a shot right in front of the net, and it didn't even look like it was that hard. And the, the shot clock or the, uh, the speedometer said 91 miles per hour. I was like, come on, that seems excessive. But you yeah, got a wrister that said 95, yeah, and I was yeah. like, ah. Yeah, Maybe. exactly. Maybe that was the speed of the stick, not necessarily the puck. I don't know what exactly they're measuring. But I think the f my favorite thing, and I mentioned this on our podcast the other day, is the moment in time, I, I don't know exactly how long they do it, but they turn the broadcasters off, and they just let you listen to the sound of the game. And I've been saying that for years, how awesome it would be for CSPN that every that, broadcast, yeah. yeah, for every broadcast to have that option. Why wouldn't you just be able to mute them? And just listen to the sounds of the game because I I don't necessarily need them to tell me who's carrying the puck. I I know we know we, right. you've you've explained to our listeners how much you don't like play yeah. by play. So I love that little thing of theirs, and I hope it grows. And maybe they can even do a full period. And well, let's talk about the awkward game. moment where a goal happened when they were doing that, and it was just silence for a while. And then oh yes, so and so scored. Right. I was watching a game yesterday where that even happened, and it was in the middle of that silent stretch and it almost seemed like I think it was the Boston game and Boston was was playing Buffalo and the Boston commentator struggled to keep his mouth shut he's like oh, you got a line full of three big guys there and blah 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 yeah. and then they went back to being silent so it has to be tough for those guys but but you love it and it, yeah it was a little bit awkward because it was like he, during the Washington Avs game right the Av the Washington Capitals scored during that moment of silence I forget what they call it <laughs> the moment is that sounds of the game. Yeah, so, something like that. The moment that. of silence. Um, and yeah, the Washington broadcaster just didn't know really what to do, right? He's like, oh, should, should I jump in here and announce the goal? I, I feel like they shouldn't. They don't need to. Keep the silence. We know what's happening. We saw that it was Kuznetsov scoring that goal, I think. Yeah, he had a good game. But Wait, let me say this. Yeah. I, I'm super bummed because I missed Shaq and Charles Barkley on the TNT, whether it was pregame or intermission, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I'm super bummed I missed it. But of the two, you know, I watched the, the ESPN Plus exclusive. That was the Capitals game, right? Uh, I wasn't super thrilled with Steve Levy, uh, Mark Messier, and I can't think of who the third one was. Uh, it was Chelios. Chelios. During the, like, the intermission, it didn't leap out to me. I, I'm very much not a person that watches that anyway so you've got to you got to catch me through the ears and then i'll start paying attention that said i can't even tell you what game i was watching and at first i was like why is paul bissonette on this tnt panel it was amazing right so he's a talker and he brings in a lot of tweets which they love to show on tnt they give him a, a 20 second shot clock to do to tell a story mm -hmm. about his team turning around at the at the beginning of a season and he at the start was like I can't tell this story in enough time and they're like just do it so he starts telling this story and Liam McHugh starts counting him down at the end and he's like see I can't do it and they cut him off no Wayne Gretzky goes that was about as long as one of your shifts huh and I was like oh my god the burn from Wayne Gretzky out of left field makes this show <laughs> Worth watching. And then, well, that's what makes Paul Bizonette great, too, because without missing a beat, right, he starts saying, yeah, you guys want some water? And tries to start handing out water to the rest of the, yeah. the crew up there. So, yeah, I was about to get into that next is the TNT broadcast is they've 
hit it on the head. They crushed it. As long as Paul Bizanet doesn't say anything too offensive and get himself fired, that's going to be an epic show to watch because let's go back to Wednesday and the game you were watching was St. Louis versus Vegas. Yeah, that was Again, an awesome game. Just so much offense combined with great goaltending. It was just a perfect hockey game in my opinion. But you go to intermission and I found myself like, I can't miss this intermission. I I'd rather miss parts of this game than miss this intermission. I got to see the interactions between Wayne and Bizanet and Liam McHugh. And, and going back, I'm a big Nuggets fan. That was Nuggets opening night, and you could not get me away from TNT, even to watch the Denver Nuggets on opening night. I just love the product that they're putting together. And, again, you, you hope Paul Bizanet doesn't ruin it. He, he, he's, he's tiptoeing the line. Well, he chose the line with Barstool to begin with. But yeah. I think uh, to that point, you know, NBA on TNT – they they've been lauded for their you know halftime show their pregame their postgame shows the way that they present it the way that they get fan interaction they feature tweets you know and all that stuff right it's often like, the best part of the night yeah and that everybody was like I can't wait to see what they do with the NHL and I have been very impressed you know I don't necessarily care about the them standing around with sticks at the end of, in the postgame talking about whatever but I would watch. And I'm bummed I missed it. Shaq and Charles Barkley standing around with hockey sticks. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love Charles Barkley. I don't even like basketball. But I have to say, I wasn't high on Gretzky initially. And I, I'm warming up to him. But I need him to warm up to it. Like, I need him to feel loose. I need him to to zing big biz nasty. They're like, to get into it. You know, but he's still, like, his delivery is still very soft. Yeah. And you, you want him to be an outsized personality. Like, you're one of the greatest hockey players to ever play the game. Connor McDavid is on a heater, which we're going to talk about later. An absolute heater. And still, Wayne Gretzky has done better. Yeah, I mean, he comes across as a lot older than he is, too, right? With his immobile self. He's very rigid and kind of just stares at the ground and very monotone. But you're starting to see some life come out of him. I sometimes wonder, it's like, if you're Wayne Gretzky... How patient are you sitting there for six, seven hours and doing this job? When in the back of your mind, you're like, I'm the greatest hockey player ever. Why am I working so hard here? Yeah. Well, he's getting paid. But he did make a comment like, we're out of here until 1 a.m. We got plenty of time to fill. You know, you're like, oh, Wayne's watching the clock on this one. So that being said, I wanted to talk about the state of hockey, right? It really feels like hockey. Minnesota? No. Oh. I just mean the hockey as a whole. Got him, Danny. <laughs> is rattled just derails me like he loves to do um it feels like hockey right now is at a better spot than it may have ever been i mean yes. obviously the, the 90s was a big time but it, it just seems like everything's going in the right direction popularity is at an all-time high and with these two guys jumping on board they're just doing so much good for the for the sport that it's catching people's attention i can't think of his name but remember tony on twitter soul x city do you remember mm -hmm. when he he like stumbled upon a hockey game and started tweeting yep. it and he had never watched it and he's watching the, the St. Blues. Louis fan. Yeah. And and now he's like a Twitter personality that people follow to see what he has to say about the game but he had this pure unadulterated moment of discovering this ridiculous sport that those of us watch, you know, it's this bread and it was hidden. It was sport. something you had to discover. Yeah. And now I think, you know, the NBA on TNT, the NHL on TNT, there's going to be this crossover. There's going to be this cross promotion. There's going to be that opportunity for audiences who have never really been able to locate hockey on the two channels or maybe when it's on CNBC, somebody accidentally sees it. You know, there's more opportunity there. I think it, it can be tough at times if there are ESPN Plus exclusives for non-digital crowds, right? But... There, it's it's potential to be opened up to just such a larger audience than it has been since it left ESPN. Well, two fun facts for you here. Hit o me. Opening night on NHL was or on ESPN. <laughs> it's like oh, not on, on NHL. NHL. Opening night on ESPN was the most watched opening night in the history of the NHL. So awesome, definitely progress. Printing money S steps in the right direction there, along with the printing money. Disney. The owner of ESPN has now is is getting close to selling out of NHL ad space. Not only are fans jumping on board, but companies are too. They're realizing, wow, this is really gaining popularity. This is gaining a lot of traction. We need our advertising dollars spent there, which I think is a great sign for the future. So of, that of where that we're means going. the money, the ads, they're selling ads, yeah. like not Disney ads, like right. They're selling Tara, ads Tara, look for at her go. 
<laughs> Can I never see that commercial again? Is that what you're telling me? Right. I may never I, have to see fraud protection. We're not going to have to recycle the same four commercials every playoffs. It Except sounds like. here's the problem I've started to discover. Literally, Discover Card is a partner of the NHL. And so we're going to be saddled with those god awful commercials because I'm sure the NHL is like, these have to be in here. Maybe before playoff time, you know, we've got the whole season in front of us. Let's come up with our own. Maybe they'll throw us in there. Like the uh, news guys in Carolina who did the uh, Jacob Slavin song from Righteous Gemstones. I guess I missed that one. Yeah, you'll have to watch Danny McBride, Righteous Gemstones on HBO. And then they did a song from that show. There's a, a song on the show called Misbehaving. These guys on the news did Jacob Slavin. And it is anytime I hear or see his name, the song's in my head. So you're saying we got to come up with a song? Yeah. Didn't we That's have that? That's the only way to year? be famous. I think we could come up with a I good mean, commercial. I mean, I did the 1 800 or 877 goals now, and JT Comfort. It got ripped and from you. Yeah, it's stolen. It was ripped <laughs> from my bosom, and now everybody uses it. They tweet the gift that Justin or the image that Justin Coxey made me. Like, like it's you're ridiculous. so funny, Connor McGahey. Yeah, people, How did you think of people this? People are like, you can't do social, but this is hilarious. Good job, <laughs> Avalanche. At Avalanche, listen. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Obviously, it's on a t shirt. Great direction of the NHL. Love what it's doing. And I'm, I'm excited to see the rest of the year and just where this goes. I, obviously, you'd love to see the popularity of, of hockey continue to grow. Um, but yeah, we'll be right back for the final portion of our show here, the Mixed Back Gate, where we get to talk whatever and anything we want, usually something to do with hockey. So we'll be right back. Stick around through the break. And uh, we love seeing you all again, hearing you. Hearing from you. Call us, 303-831-1340, or text us. The Hockey Show. I'll sing for you. My high sports. Jacob Slavin. JJ, Ryan, Danny Bailey behind the glass. We'll be right back. We back. Final segment, season two, episode one of The Hockey Show. I can't believe they brought us back, Ryan. We're back like Ted Lasso. We must have done something right in season one. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but as long as we don't deviate too much, they, they probably keep us around, right? Do you hear that, sponsors? Do you hear that out there in sponsorship dreamland? Yeah, we're, we're just so popular. We're the biggest hockey show in Colorado. You want to put your advertising dollars, much like Disney. We're I little, mean, the Avalanche should here. be advertising with us. We're a little cheaper here. Well, yeah, that's a conversation for someone else, I guess. Neither here nor there. But this is the Mixed Bag State. Time to talk. Anything we want. we got to start with Evander Kane. What a mess going on in San Jose. Not only did he try to start the season with a fake vaccination card. I mean, that's the latest thing. Let's, I mean, it's... Right. Yeah. How it long do you have? Off-season of problems for him, right? I mean, personal matters, whether they're you know true or not, they're still alleged. Um, he was his, his estranged wife accused him of betting on his own games, mm -hmm. which he was investigated for, and... Uh, came out clean. Yep, yeah, came out clean, found innocent. Uh, then she accused him of domestic assault, mm -hmm. which uh, they have also found no evidence of. And that was buried in the lead that he was suspended for 21 games for using a fake COVID vaccination card. Because why? Why? It's literally more work to get a fake card than it is to just get the shots. And I, I mean, when you get your vaccination, you, they hand you the card, right? And the, the first thing you notice is they put the number of the dose that they gave you so right right away you're like oh this is so you can't fake it yeah, i don't it's very i don't know why he missed that yeah. I, why I, he yeah so. i mean this is a guy who's been in trouble up and down the nhl everywhere he goes and he puts out a statement saying you know i let everybody down i take responsibility and i'm going to work to be better and you're like that's all fine and dandy but this has been going on for like 10 years mm -hmm. i mean he got into a fight with a a woman outside of a club in buffalo across the street from the restaurant i was at for the draft, like the the entirety of NHL media is at this bar, and he got in a fight across the street at this bar. Like, what are you doing? You're right. I mean, just proving to be toxic for any team he's on, and then you look at what San Jose is doing so far this year without him, and you just can't help but think, wow, they don't need him. And he had a great year last he, year. They're better without him. It makes me think, too, that, you know, the stories that came out of Winnipeg when – Dustin Bufflin was painted as the bad guy. He threw Vander Kane's track suit in the shower and like turned it on and like the kind of hazing slash bullying kind of BS that was going on there. Well, now you're like, I, f I feel less bad for the guy because trouble just follows him everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't seem like he's exactly taking care of what he needs to take care of as an NHL or that your fear that once his career is all said and done, what is he left with? What is he 
going to be doing. I mean, he, right. nobody's going to bring him on as a broadcaster. He's yes. going to be low on money. I loved the money phone thing. Like, I thought it was hilarious at the time. People were so offended by him holding all the stacks of money in Vegas. But, you know, you're like, you need to, I don't, I'm not going to tell somebody how to live their life, but like you're, you're potentially throwing your career away here and it's all self-inflicted. The Seattle Kraken get their first game in their brand new arena. Had to start the season on the road because it just wasn't quite ready. But have you looked into the arena? Like I said, if you look on ESPN, you can get a full breakdown. I love how they reused the old arena, right? So not Just lifted the roof up. Right. Already not being wasteful there. They made it bigger. And, of course, you love the way that they're making it a climate-friendly arena. I mean, after all, it is called Climate Pledge Arena. Yeah, they got rain recapture system there and, you know, all sorts of cool stuff. I'm interested to see how it works out because... And I think L.A. has a similar setup, but, you know, water is becoming a scarcity in places like here. And you wonder about the amount of waste in the water for a hockey game, like the amount of waste, the amount of water Zamboni uses, getting rid of the ice at the end of the season, that kind of stuff. So you want to see that kind of stuff. I love it. Absolutely. And something I had read before, too, is that the the music during the game was part of the agreement they're on it like a campus right and there's a community radio station on this this campus of where the climate pledge arena is and so they had a deal with the local radio station that the local djs would get to pick music to be played during the games which i think is awesome and seattle obviously has an outstanding legacy of musicians and music to come from there right yeah sticking with the culture that helped them get to where they are now Another thing I wanted to get into is Bob Christensen. I don't know if you got the chance to see it. They played it on opening night, um, but there's a little snippet. I think it's a six-minute video of just kind of breaking down the ESPN song, right? We all talked about it when this all broke out and how excited we were to just hear that ESPN song. I still, watching that video this morning, gave me chills, just the the reminiscing and you know all, all that so i still it, haven't watched it if you get the chance I definitely haven't even watch heard it the song yet it's cool narrated by justin bieber you've heard the song i mean this year since the transition happens i haven't heard it well it's just cool to, to get to meet the guy who invented it right and who, you met him i mean you do through the video oh, okay. you feel like you're that's why people love watching us on youtube ryan they feel like they're sitting there with us while we talk our we nonsense. love all six of you <laughs> Exactly. And getting to see the guy who made this, and little did he know he was making a banger for all eternity, but it turned out to be just something that everybody knows and loves. Not everybody, actually. They interviewed a couple players, and they couldn't pinpoint what the song was, but th- they, were they were young. Negative 12 years old when it came out. Exactly. And then uh, Jack Eichel. We're still on Eichel Watch. Not sure what's going to happen with him. Everybody's waiting with bated breath to see what Buffalo does. Doesn't seem like they're going to be able to send him off for the return they want. I guess, what have you... What have you gathered in the last couple months from the Jack Eichel situation. What do you anticipate happening? The dude has to have surgery on a disc in his neck and has not yet. So I don't understand the the, the Eichel watch. Is he going to get traded to a team? Are the Avalanche interested? Like, the guy's not going to play this year. So, you know, temper those expectations. He needs surgery. He wants, uh, he wants a disc fusion, which uh, a lot of doctors in the league have said has never been done and the team wants him to have disc replacement surgery which apparently is common in the nfl and nhl and it's also something that probably has to be redone after the playing days are over and so i don't blame him for not wanting to have to have two surgeries on a disc in his neck if he can just fuse it i don't know how that works for turning your head you know head on a swivel playing hockey is super important it's not like you can just have a fixed neck but i don't i don't understand the 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 pressure on what's Jack Eichel going to do like it's a long long term thing it's a long term play for sure you you like to hear that the avalanche are at least kicking the tires you know it came out that Joe Sakic made a call on it but he said before he has a lot of calls he makes, everybody makes calls on every, right. anybody like oh Jack Eichel what do you want for him you're not doing you your job if that? you're not making nope. those calls yeah no exactly thanks. see you later um and with that you know you had Robin Leonard kind of come out and make some comments which kind of echoed what you were saying you know he's still a human and you got to kind of look at the human side first he's not just a commodity let's let's talk about the not just the robin lander situation Carey price goes into you know the nhl assistance program we don't know if it's for mental health we don't know if it's for substance abuse right we don't really know and then hayes Mm -hmm. dies yeah and it turns out he was addicted to pills and took a, a speedball 
which, you know, they said they found cocaine and fentanyl in his system, which means he thought he was getting heroin, probably, and cocaine, and he got fentanyl and it killed him. He overdosed. And that is, you know, fentanyl is a major, major problem in this country, and it stems from the opioid crisis. And it's it's very lethal in tiny little doses. And, you know, it's horribly sad. But it it speaks to the level of addiction that goes hidden in professional sports. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when it comes to pain pills and right, uh, you know, hockey players are known for partying. They party throughout their careers. So when they're done and you suddenly have no more career, well, I think it's only natural to go back to the things that made you happy during your career. And one of those might be cocaine. And now, like you're saying, there's a big problem with fentanyl being in America's cocaine. It's we're we're losing a lot of stars, and and I'm sure there's a ton of people that have passed away that we don't know about here. You know, non celebrities. So it's a major issue that needs to be addressed, and it's it's tough seeing celebrities and athletes go down because of this. Narcan, folks, you can get Narcan over the counter at pharmacies. You can get it for free at places. Narcan will help in these situations. What is Narcan? It's a a nasal inhalant that will like. Uh, turn off the receptors in your brain to that drug. It will basically, it could basically reverse an overdose like that. Snap of the finger. Wow, I'd never heard of that. So there Narcan. you go. Learning something new every day on hockey show, just giving back to the community. And but the other thing is, a lot of people are afraid when something like this happens that they are going to get in trouble. You know, so there's a delay in calling nine one one or an ambulance or whatever. Like you, you need to act immediately to try and save somebody's life. Right. Exactly. You, you, I don't think you get in trouble for using. You get in trouble for selling. So just don't tell them you're planning on selling it. And, you know, Possession, you okay. but yeah. But that'll do it for this week's episode. Danny, what do we have next? Is CSU on? CSU played last night. They had a little bit of a missed opportunity on a late field goal, so they lost. So we're just in syndication the rest of the day. But So just the replay of the show over and over all day. Yeah, yeah. If, if you want to hear the show, you can always listen to it on uh, all the podcast providers. Just look for the hockey show. And... Um, yeah, check out milehighsports.com or you can rewatch the show on Twitter. Yeah, and, and YouTube, YouTube too. And YouTube. Absolutely. Without so, the music because YouTube hates the music. There it is. I think we won opening night. 1 and 0. 1 and 0. We'll be back all season. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, you know, we love you. So, um, love us back. Love us back. We'll see you guys next week here on the Hockey Show. JJ Jerez, Ryan Bolding, Danny Bailey. Bye everybody. <laughs>